late part of July here in Fremont, California by the San Francisco Bay and the cherry tomatoes are starting to get ripe. I've been picking here for a while this morning. I got myself a small basket full. Anyway, uh, cherry tomatoes uh, usually are overabundant in the vegetable garden. It's not uncommon that most of us have no idea what to do with all of them. Um, they're a little tedious picking too. Uh, but the cherry tomato actually makes one of the best sun-dried tomatoes on earth. Most of the sun-dried tomato that you'll find in the markets uh, has been made from Italian uh, tomatoes like the Romas that, or San Marzano, the paste types. Uh, those tomatoes tend to be fairly low in sugar and reasonably acid. When they're dried out, that acid concentrates. And for me, commercial sun-dried tomato is entirely too acetic for my taste. I don't really care for it. But sun-dried cherry tomato, on the other hand, uh, they're very sugary, it concentrates when they're put out in the sun, and they dry out just like a nice little tomato flavored raisin. Very sweet, very delicious, and they actually can be used on salads during the winter time when we have no tomatoes uh, in lieu of the uh, uh, nasty old store-bought tomatoes that taste like cardboard or plastic or whatever they wrapped them in. Uh, so. I got myself enough tomatoes to get started on the project and I'm going to head for the kitchen and we'll go to step two. So the next thing we do with our tomatoes is to bring them inside the kitchen and we have to go ahead and get the little stem ends off. All right, So the little green guy on the end isn't going to do us any good for our purposes. Some of these came off uh, uh, the plants without them, others have them. So I'm going to go through here and remove all the little stem guys. I'm also going to, of course, inspect the tomatoes to make sure I don't have any bad ones in here. Um, I think most of this looks pretty good, but uh, get the little stems off there. Take hold of your cherry tomato like so, grab the little stem in and go twist. Very simple. So the next thing to do after we remove the little stem ends is uh, we're going to have to clean the tomatoes to make sure that there's no dirt in here. So we're gonna Rinse them in the colander under some cold water. There you go, that should do it. They were pretty clean to begin with anyway. Okay, so the tomatoes are washed. We've taken the little stems off. And now Ellen has them here in the cutting board. And she has a special little secret trick for cutting the tomatoes in half across the, uh, uh, the length of the, of the fruit. These Cherry tomatoes dry much better out in the sun if you cut them in half before you put them out. We'll talk about that more later. But she has the lid from a plastic storage container for food, lined all the tomatoes up inside that lid, and then on her other hand she has another matching lid. So Ellen, go ahead and show the folks what you're going to do here. Is put the other lid over the top for safety to hold them in and taking the chef knife and just running it from one side to the other. Um, that is absolutely brilliant. You're a genius. No, it's not me. It's you learned that, huh? I learned that from another video guy. How about that? Uh, Fast. I, that's fabulous. I've never, I've never seen it done that way before. Fast. And clean. Look. Really? Okay, so uh, we got, uh, we're going to do another one for the folks there. So. Okay, well, I, this is very impressive. So as you can see, Ellen just lined all the little cherries up in that uh, food storage container lid. Put another one on top. Press it's down nice. Firmly. Yep. And then slide that old French knife right through the middle there, right down the center of them. We used to do this one at a time by hand. And wow, that was a lot of work, I tell you. Uh, this really beats it. I love it. Sometimes if these are really big, we'll cut them in quarters. Mm -hmm. Dry faster. Great. You have to have a sharp knife, too. Yeah, get the knife good and sharp before you start doing anything in the kitchen. They cut. Work the nice. Little ones. Beautiful. All right, well, that was just great. The way Ellen showed us how to cut those tomatoes, I thought was fabulous. Uh, I've taken the cherries that she cut up here and I've dumped the little uh, lids full on top of the uh, screen. What I have here is a window screen um, that was made specially by me for sun drying tomatoes on. Uh, I've got it set out here on a couple of sawhorses. 
there you can see that my drying equipment is the California Sun, um, two sawhorses, um, and a pine and redwood frame uh, that's got window screen stapled to it. Uh, ideally, if you can find stainless steel screen, that would be your best choice. Although the uh, plastic screens work fine too. Uh, in this case, I believe I'm using a stainless steel screen. I have another matching panel of screen here in the foreground uh, that goes over the top when I'm done. Right now, I have taken all the cherry tomatoes and I've just dumped them in irregular heaps here. So I have my cherry tomatoes all dumped here in a pile and now I'm going to go ahead and start flipping them all over nicely uh, so that the cut side points upwards towards the bright morning sun. Uh, I found over time that this is definitely the way to go because uh, if you try doing this too late in the day, for instance, uh, the tomatoes won't form a callus over the top before nightfall, and then bacteria and fungi will grow on the cut surface of the fruit. So the best suggestion I have is first make sure that you do this early in the morning, right. taking all these tomatoes, and let's cut them up, and we're going to lay them out so they have all day long to sit out here in the sun uh, before the night falls. That should produce a real nice leather across the top of the fruit. Uh, that'll resist molding. Make sure when you spread your tomatoes out that you spread them out so none of them touch. You want the air moving between all your little cherry tomatoes. Um, I've tried drying them whole. It's not satisfactory. Uh, no. By cutting them open like this first allows the excess moisture to come out of the fruit. Uh, tomato skin is very much like a plastic bag and it doesn't breathe very well and so putting them out in the sun here with all the moisture on the inside seems like they start to kind of cook or ferment inside before they can actually begin to dry out like a raisin so best suggestion I have for you is make sure you cut all those tomatoes in two lay them uh, cut side up into the sun in the morning then after they've dried for a couple of days with the face side up, if you choose to, you can flip them over and let the back side set up towards the sun. That's fine. We often uh, will flip the tomatoes. It's a little bit tedious, but I'll tell you what, it is well worth it. These are the most incredible tasting uh, fruit that you can imagine. The sun drying concentrates the sugar and concentrates the uh, flavor of the tomato. Uh, we like to take them off when they're still just a little bit pliable. I like mine kind of chewy. Um, it's better than too hard, too crackly. Um, we'll put them on top of salads. I'll toss them into pasta at the end, you know, take a little basil and some parsley, uh, a few herbs like thyme, a little ground black pepper, um, garlic and then stir it together in your pasta and put parmesan cheese over the top with olive oil. Um, that's pretty amazingly good. Um, they're also really really good if you take these when they're dry and you pack them in jars with olive oil, uh, garlic, spices, black pepper. Um, you can can them if you're careful. Uh, oil does heat different than water so you have to be careful about it. Ordinarily what I do is layer them in the jars uh, with the spices and the garlic and so on and then I'll go ahead and uh, pour hot, uh, really hot olive oil over the top and just seal them in a cold pack fashion. Yeah, so these uh, these will be nothing like the dried tomatoes that you've purchased in the market. So if you've had sun-dried tomatoes and you didn't think much of them, um, I would definitely give this a try because you might find that you absolutely love these. Uh, as I said earlier, I do not like commercial sun-dried tomatoes. They're too acetic. They don't appeal to me. They even give me indigestion sometimes. Um, but the ones we do at home are far superior, far more delicious product. All right, there we go. Uh, I have all of the tomatoes laid out evenly on the table. I've got my other screen here. I washed these recently uh, to get all the dust and stuff from storage off of them. 
Uh, now I'm taking the other screen and I'm placing it on top like this over a fruit. Uh, this will keep birds, critters, and animals, flies and such from sitting on the top of our fruit until it's dry. Um, it's very simple contrivance. Anybody can make one of these. Well, that's about all there is to it. Uh, this is pretty basic stuff. We uh, went out in the garden, we picked ourselves some tomatoes, we brought them in, pulled the stems off, then we washed them in the sink. Afterwards, Ellen showed you that cute little trick of how to cut these things in two, so simply. Um, then I took them, brought them outside, dumped them on the screen, laid them out on top of the screen, put another screen on top to keep the buds off, and uh, now we're just going to let them sit here for a few days unattended so that they dry out in the sun. It'll take probably around seven to eight days uh, on good weather in summer here in California to actually dry these out. Now we don't have any fear of rain in this climate where we're at for months, but if you happen to be in a place where it could rain, um, you could either move the frames inside during a storm or you could take a storm window or some plastic sheeting and lay it over the top if there's a chance of rain. Uh, frankly, I think a glass storm window is probably better. It's heavier and may stay in place more easily. So if you have an old storm window around, you might want to make your screen frames to fit that window perfectly so you can use it for rain protection in a wet climate. But if you happen to live here in uh, our wonderful Mediterranean climate of coastal California where rain only falls in the winter, um, you'll find this is one of the easiest things in the world to do. Uh, if you don't have room to do this out in the sun, I'm sure they taste acceptably good done in a convection oven or in a dehydrator. But make use of them cherry tomatoes. You're going to love it. I guarantee it.